Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a little bit of a look at why we get this error when we're developing a web front end and we're accessing the back end and how we can fix the error. So to demonstrate this, I've got a back end running on localhost 5000 forward slash API is the root. And when I access that uh, root there, I get some JSON back, which is in this format. It's not very big, as you can see. I have a name and an address and I have some kind of random data being put in there for me by the Faker library in Python. Then I have a front end, which is also not very complicated. If we just go to the inspector, what you see is that we have the button and then we have two H2 elements. One is name, one is address. And then what should happen is when we click load data, it should hit the back end, get the name and address from the API and fill them in here. So if I just refresh the page, then go to the network tab and hit load data, you can see that we make the request to localhost 5000 forward slash API. If I click on that and then go to the response, we can see that indeed we get the JSON data back. But if we look in the console, we get this cross origin request blocked. Same origin policy, blah, 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 blah. Reason the cause header access control allow origin is missing. And this is something that when you first start out with web development can be really, really frustrating. But once you've understood it, it's actually quite easy to fix it and also understand why it's happening. So the error is actually telling us pretty much what is going on. It's just slightly ambiguous here. It's telling us that this header is missing. It's just not telling us where the header should be or why indeed we need this particular header. So to explain this a little bit, let's take a look at a diagram. So imagine we have our API server and we've put that on mydataserver.com and then we make ourselves a front end. And from our front end, what we want to be able to do is we want to make a request to our API that we've built. Let's say we're getting some personal information and then we want to get the response and then read in the response. But when we do that, for some reason, the browser refuses to show the information. So why is that? Well, the reason is, is because we've made what's known as a cross origin request. That is that the source of the request, goodsite.com, is not the same as the destination, which is mydataserver.com. And this is what cross origin is. So the origin of the request is different from the destination of the request. If I go back to the web application, the origin is not just defined by the actual IP address of where you're going, but also the port. So in our case here, we've got the back end on localhost 5000 and the front end on localhost 8000. Therefore, a cross origin request is being made for the information. Now, by default, browsers are not allowed to show information or resource or use resources that they've requested from a server if it's a cross origin request, unless the access control origin header is set. And this header needs to be set to a certain value. Now, a value that you often see is the wildcard a star. That means that if the server responds with this in its headers, then it's going to allow the resource to be used from any origin. So in other words, if somebody made another website, let's say nastysite.com, they made a request to your API, and then the server returned the information and you'd configured your server to return the header access control our origin with the value star inside it, then this browser as well would use and the information that it got from your server. If you wanted to prevent this happening, what you could do is actually instead of the star is put the value goodsite, www.goodsite.com in there. And now the browser in nasty site wouldn't show the information that's come back in the response or use any of the resources that it's got from the response. It would be able to make the request, but it wouldn't do anything with the response. Whereas goodsite.com would still work because the header that's come back in the response from the server is this header here. And the browser would verify that yes, the server is going to allow use of resources when the request is made from goodsite.com. And that's exactly what's happening in the little example here. We have a back end, which is different origin to the front end. Therefore, we're making a cross origin request. The problem is, is the back end has not been configured to actually put this header in and say where it's going to allow cross origin requests to come from. If I go into the console and just type curl verbose and then have a look at the API, we can see the headers here that come back with the data from the server. And we can see that we don't have this access control allow origin header inside the response here. And therefore the browser browser isn't using the information. So let's fix that by actually going into the code. Now this isn't a programming video or anything like this. I've just got a flask server here and I'm using the flask cause library to set this header. So if I uncheck uh, this line here and actually use cause on the application, what this is going to do is actually set this header for me. So if I go back now and just clear the screen and now make the curl request again, what you'll see is now we've got this access control allow origin and it's actually been set to star as the value which means it's going to allow cross origin requests and use of the resource from any 
requesting address. In other words, now, if I go back and just click load data again, now I get the data loading in the application and I don't get any error in the console. I'll just refresh and demonstrate that again because the server is now returning the header that says access control origin is star. If I go to the network tab under the request here, you can see that in the Oops, you can see that in the response headers, we've actually got this response header here. I'll just quickly dash back, take this out so that we don't have that in the response header. And then we can go back and click load data again, go to this request. And now you can see that it's missing from the response headers. And therefore we got the error again in the console. Now I put it out in the diagram here, you can actually specify exactly from where you want resources to be used. So if I drop back into the code, then I'm going to uncomment these lines here. And what I'm going to say now is that I'm going to allow access, but only from localhost, let's say 8001. So now if we flick back into the browser and just refresh the page, what we can see if we hit load data is we now get the cross origin error here. And that's because we don't have this header set to allow requests from our origin. If I go back into the console and run the curl request again, you can say, see that we've got the access control our origin header, but it's only allowed now from localhost 8001. So what I'm actually going to do is quickly stop my web server here and just rerun the web server, this time from port 8001. Then we'll go into the browser and correct the port to localhost 8001. Now we're making the request from an origin which has been approved. So if I click load data, there's no error and I get the data. If I go back here and just stop and restart my server, but this time on port 8000, go back into the browser and go back to port 8000 and now hit load data, you can see that we get the blocked cross origin request because there's no header saying that this origin is allowed. And just to hammer the point home, let's go into the configuration and now say that we will allow requests from localhost 8000. Back into the application, I'll just refresh, hit load data, and now the data is loading without any problems. So hopefully that's given you a simple explanation of why you're getting this error and also how to deal with this error. I would highly recommend that you take a quick look at the cross origin resource sharing page on Wikipedia and I'll put a link in the description because this describes a little bit more that's going on behind the scenes here because you'll notice if you start looking at some other APIs online and things that they don't come with this header included at all yet things still seem to work. And that has something to do with uh, pre-flight checking where the browser actually makes some pre-checks of what it's allowed to do before it actually starts accessing resources on a particular server. But that's something for another time and not for this video. For this video, hopefully you've had a relatively clear explanation of the error and now you're not going to get quite so frustrated in your development when you see that horrible red text occurring in the console. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.